Okay, we've got a good one here today. This one's from Caltech Math Me 2025 Finals 47. We have the integral of the product from k equals 1 to n minus 1 of the square root 2x squared minus 2x squared cosine 2 pi k over n dx. Okay, the interesting thing here is we have this seemingly difficult problem with a product inside the integral, and yet it's gonna go really fast and it just relies on one trick, like one of those tricks that your teacher doesn't want you to know because the teachers are hiding all the good tricks, of course. So what we wanna do on it, to get started, we've got some an obvious starting place. We've got this two x squared that we can factor out. So when I take that outside of the square root, we can write it as, we'll just have square root of two x, and then what's left is gonna be something like one minus cosine. Let me abbreviate this, like um, I'm gonna write this as 2a, and we'll just call it, just to save a little writing, so I don't have to keep rewriting pi k over n, we'll call that a. But then doing it like this, we can kind of split up the two things. Inside the product, we're just gonna be multiplying by square root of two x over and over again, and it's got no dependency on the k. So actually the way we can do to take it outside of the sum and kind of like bring it right there is to think about it as square root of two x to the n minus one, just because we're gonna have n minus one terms in this, so we're multiplying it n minus one times, so we'll just do it like that. But breaking it up that way, notice now the whole product, inside the product, all we're gonna have is this thing, and this has no x in it. Even when you look at what our a is, there's no x in here. So the whole product can be considered a constant term. What I can do is call what's left of the product P and then bring it outside of the integral. So let me write it out so I don't make too much of a mess so we can understand what's happening. So we're gonna have this product out front of the integral. And so then we're just integrating this square root of two X to the N minus one DX. But then I think you can see the actual integral is gonna be really easy because this is power rule. This piece here is gonna be a constant. Of course, we have to deal with this later, but the actual integral, not too bad. Let me rewrite it before we do it. So let's take the constant up front. We still have the product. This thing, square root of two, I can write as two to the one half, and then we're distributing in the n minus one power. So I'll write it like this for the moment. But then the whole integral becomes just x to the n minus one dx. So this is just power rule. When we do this, adding one on the exponent, we just get x to the n over n. I'll add a plus c to it later, but let's see what we have left. We have, it's just gonna be p. Cleaning this up a little bit, I'll write it as two n minus one over two with exponent properties. And then we have our x to the n. Let's write it all over n like this. Notice in the original problem, they didn't tell us anything about n. So we're gonna have n in our final solution. The only thing we need to figure out is this p. We need to deal with this product now. So we'll deal with that on the next board. Okay, so now we're ready to find out what is our p gonna be using what we have left over here. But with this right here, we can use a trig identity. I can write this a little different. So we have one minus, we'll just deal with this one minus cosine two a. If I divide this by two, this is actually gonna be the same thing as sine squared of a, just using that power reduction in reverse. I don't wanna change the expression, so we'll multiply it in by a two. So now we can take this and put it back in the square root. When we do that, I guess we can just kind of do it over here. So then what's gonna happen is this is gonna simplify down to square root of two, technically absolute value sine A. I'm gonna drop it. The reason is because if you look what's happening, we're going from K equals one to N minus one. So that means we never reach N. So if you plug the greatest value here in for k, we never quite reach pi. So we're looking at just quadrants one and two here, signs always positive, and that allows me to drop this here. So using this in our product p, we're going again, k equals one to n minus one, and we have square root of two sine a. But for the square root, we can do the same thing we did before and kind of pull it out because we're just gonna be multiplying it n minus one times, so this is gonna be two one half to the n minus one, that many copies of it. And now we're just looking at pi from k equals one. And so now we're just looking at the product of sine a, but I think this is a good time to put it back. So sine a is sine 
pi k over n. But now here's the key to the whole thing. This product right here, the way we have it, the product of sines, this has a well-known formula. This is the same thing as n over 2 to the n minus 1. So all we need to do is take this whole thing here, plug it back in for p, and we can just do a little algebra and finish it off. Okay, so now for the p-value, we plugged in what we had in the last board, but now it's time for simplification because n's are going to cancel here. If you multiply these together, you're gonna, we can write it as this thing squared, but when you square it, exponent properties, that goes away. Now we have 2n minus 1 over 2n minus 1. This whole thing cancels out here, and all we're left with is x to the n. So for my final solution on it, we just get x to the n plus c, and that's it. The way I did this the first time on paper is just working on a few terms, because you do terms set n equal to like 1, 2, 3, 4, you quickly see the pattern that each of them comes out to this, x to the n plus c. The only thing is it's not really showing that it's going to work for all values. It's just kind of getting a sense of the pattern. So that works out pretty nice. But one thing I want to look at before we finish up is let's look at that product of sines formula and see if we can figure out how that one works. Okay, to see why this top formula works, we're going to start with this thing here, the roots of unity, writing it as a product. The idea of this, real quick, so I mean, we for the roots of unity, we show our root as a in, pro, in complex form like this. You can think of it like, you know, when you have the simplest form, like x squared minus 1, the unity part, we're solving, this is going to be true when x squared is equal to 1. That's how this is going to be equal to 0. If you factored it, of course, it's going to be like this. You could think about it like x. You could think about the two roots as being minus 1 and 1. Well, what we have here is the same thing where our root is going to be this part here. So we have a product of x minus the root, just like we have here. So this is our setup. So this is our setup for the roots of unity, factoring it, factoring a polynomial as a product of all of its roots. And then next what we can do on it is if I divide off x minus 1, do it on both sides, well then what's going to happen on the right side of the equation? Notice when k is 0, you just plug in 0. This here becomes a 1, so that term cancels off. So how we can do it is we can rewrite the product on the right side and just start it at 1. Just It's like an index change, and then we still have this same thing right here because it's going to cancel with the x minus 1. On the left side of the equation, you can think about if you were to factor this out, what you're going to be left with. I don't have a lot of space for it, but it's going to be something like x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2 all the way down to 1 on the left side. From here, what we do is we evaluate this. We look at what happens when x equals 1. Here, what happens, let's just maybe kind of do it on the fly. So this here becomes a 1 if x equals 1, of course. Here, everything becomes 1. We're summing up all the 1s, but we're going to have, it's going to be actually n minus 1 terms. It's going to be n minus 1 terms, but plus this 1. So it's actually n terms here n times a bunch of ones, that's just going to be an n. So I can make the whole right side an n. Another way to look at it would be what happens here. You could look at this here as a limit as n equals 1. Use L'Hopital's rule on it, and then you're going to get the same thing in n. So then we keep going, but here's a nice trick I can do here. I can rewrite this a very similar way. Do the same sum, but change the exponent here to a negative sign. So we'll just write it like this. The reason this works, you can think about it, if you think about the circle here, if we're going with starting with positive terms, we're kind of rotating around the whole circle this way. Well, here we're doing the same thing in reverse, but what it just means is it's going to end up being the same exact values. We're going to hit all the same values just in a different order. The product of values in a different order doesn't matter. So these two things are equal and they're both equal to n. But if these two are equal, then I can just multiply them together and expand it out. Multiplying them together, two copies of n, on the left side, we're going to have n squared. And then on the right side, we just need to FOIL it out. So just doing multiplication here, multiplying everything out, we get this kind of thing. This one right here, the reason is because the exponents end up being, adding exponents, we get 0. This is like e to the 0. That's how we get that 1. Combine these together, we get 2 minus this stuff, taking out the minus sign, we're adding it. All I need to do here is if I divide by 2, 
multiplied by two, so I'm not changing it. But this thing right here, this is gonna be the same thing. This is gonna be our complex definition for cosine. It's gonna be cosine of two times, yeah, let's, um, yeah, so it's gonna be two times k pi n. Let me kind of come over here and simplify it. We'll consider this like um, theta or whatever. So if we have two minus two cosine two t, if I factor a one out of it, I get, sorry, I don't factor out a one, that doesn't do anything, right? Factor out a two, so we have two times one minus cosine two t. I'll do, I feel like we just did this a little while ago. If I divide by two, um, multiply by two, this is our power reduction we had before. So what we have is it's gonna be four, and this becomes sine squared t. That's where we're gonna bring our sine back into it. And just to be clear on it, I'm saying that t is gonna be k pi over n. So all I need to do, let's take this, and we'll put it back, we'll put our t back, we'll throw it back in the product and see if we can finish it off. But now we get something pretty simple to work with. I'm just gonna, everything's a perfect square. Everything's squared, so let's just take square root on both sides. We can do it, product's just multiplication, right? So, so let's see, on the left side we just get n. n's always positive. We should have a requirement that n, I don't know if it needs to be at least one or two or whatever, but n's gonna be positive, so we're fine there. Here we're gonna have, this is gonna become product four square root of four is two. Here, sine t. We're not gonna have absolute value because like I said, same idea of what we had before when we were doing the problem, it's always gonna be positive value if we take up to n minus one and plug it in here. This value is always positive. Then using that same trick, take the two out, we're multiplying it n minus one times, so we end up with two n minus one. And then, let's see, so it's still inside the product, we're gonna have sine, and let me plug all this stuff back into the sign now. And then let's see if we can put it all together. We're saying this is equal to n. So let's bring the n over here. Let me get rid of the left side just to avoid any confusion. And all I need to do is divide off this two to the n minus one on both sides, divide it off, cancel it here, divide it over here. And there we have it, our product formula for signs. It's gonna be just n over two n minus one, and that's it. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.